Hi, my name is Megan Griffith. I teach philosophy here at Davidson College, and I'm really excited to be teaching a seminar called Human Agency. Uh, my own work is in free will and action theory, so philosophers are interested in things like what motivates human action, um, how do our desires and beliefs and reasons play into action, are we free to do what we do, or are sort of chains of causes determining what we do. Um, in this seminar, I'd like to consider this topic really broadly. So anything from, you know, why are we morally responsible for our actions? Um, what is it about us in particular that makes us morally responsible when, say, you know, our dogs and our cats and little tiny children are not morally responsible? Um, some philosophers suggest there are things about us like the fact that we can evaluate our own actions and we can decide who we want to be, um, we can decide how we want to change, we can decide that we don't like certain desires that we have. These are all really interesting questions that I'd like to look at. Um, I think this kind of seminar should have a broad range of different people who might be interested. Um, in terms of grade levels and ages, I think um, some of the younger kids might be interested in thinking about sort of the process of coming to be a responsible agent. So, like I said before, we don't typically hold really tiny children responsible for what they do, but at a certain point they start to take responsibility. And what does that process look like? Um, so, you know, kindergartners, first graders might be thinking about, you know, the idea that what I do causes consequences, and that might make people blame me or praise me for what I do. And are there times when I'm not blameworthy for what I do, perhaps because I didn't know what was going on or because, you know, somebody pushed me into you so it's not my fault? So these are all kinds of issues that might be interesting to younger kids to think about and start to understand this process of becoming a moral agent um, instead of taking responsibility. Um, on a sort of higher level, um, older students, I think, can get really interested in some of these issues from the standpoint of analyzing characters in literature. Um, there's lots of rich literary examples of characters that make decisions and we want to know did their past kind of dictate that decision? Was there something else they could have done? Um, what is it about that person's psychology or environment or circumstance that played into that decision? And How do we feel about that with respect to whether we blame them or whether we relate to them or whether we feel sorry for them or, or sympathize? Um, People who study history and social studies might be interested in those kinds of questions about historical figures and historical circumstances. So um, one interesting question has to do with what philosophers call moral luck, this idea that it seems like there are certain circumstances that um, people are placed into that dictate that they do certain things. So, you know, growing up in Nazi Germany might be why somebody joins the Nazi youth movement, and if they hadn't been born there, and had been born in the United States in a different century, they never would have done those horrible things. Is that just a matter of luck? Or do we still blame them for what they do? And there's all sorts of interesting um, philosophical treatments of that. Um, I think there's some interest in, um, as from, from a scientific perspective, so Lots of stuff in neuroscience and psychology that talks about what dictates our actions. There are psychologists and neuroscientists nowadays who think we don't have any free will because of the brain processes that they've um, looked at in various experiments. And philosophers have weighed in in some really interesting ways on these. Um, people who do physics and biology might be interested in notions of cause and effect. Do all do sort of causal chains starting from the Big Bang determine what we do? Does the structure of space and time leave no room for us to kind of forge a different future than the one that's already um, on track. So I think there's lots of um, different ways to approach this and I'd be really excited to see what um, different participants were interested in doing. We could read um, some historical treatments, people like Aristotle, um, people like that, or we could look at some contemporary metaphysics, we could look at some contemporary ethics, um, we could also look at some existential literature or philosophy, um, so there's lots of fun stuff and I'm really looking forward to it.